All right. Hello, hello, everyone, and welcome to stream. It feels like it's been forever since I've actually said, like, my actual intro. <laughs> because it's always, like, I feel like it's always something else. Like, it's like, oh, oh, there we go. Good. Um, it's always like, oh, it's like somebody else is with me. Or, like, I just haven't streamed in a long time. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Hi. How am I, Naomi? Um, my current mood is listening to the version of Resonance by Home that's slowed down with the Blade Runner 2049 edit over it that's like, you look lonely, I can fix that over top of it. So that's kind of the mood that I'm in right now. But I hope you're all doing great. <laughs> I hope you're all doing well. Um, and today, um, it is corn. It is indeed corn. Because guess what? We are going to be drawing fantasy characters and we are starting with Dragonborn, as all of you have voted um, for in the poll. Um, I said hi! <laughs> It is, it's his father. <laughs> Hi, Crow. Um, but yes, we're going to be starting with Dragonborn today um, for fantasy critters, fantasy creatures. I'm sorry, all Skyrim enjoyers, we will be going with the D&D &D version of Dragonborn. Um, but um, that is what we will be starting with. I voted for Tabaxi. Maybe we can do Tabaxi afterwards, uh, Naomi. Um, but yes, before we get started with that, let's get into the intros because if you didn't know our growing community is filled with tons of art nerds and we art nerds have to stick together so if you're an art nerd too be sure to check the links to our oh god social media in the description below and check out our website for our class offerings where you can get critique guidance and encouragement from our instructors because we're not just a youtube channel we are an art school too so if you'd like to support us so we can keep making free content consider supporting us by becoming a youtube member for exclusive channel perks like emotes and sub badges or supporting us on patreon for as little as two dollars per month where you can get access to tons of perks like my working files critique sessions class recordings and a huge discount on our classes that have a limited amount of spots so be sure to check those out before they are gone i do really like drawing tabaxi yeah <laughs> fun fact if it's not a, like if i don't have reference i'm actually very bad at drawing cats i have one way of drawing cats or any cat like critter uh and as another friend of mine has described it it is not quite a cat but more so the essence of a cat so <laughs> um maybe i'll show that to you later um, but before we get into the actual illustration portion of today, we have the submissions. We are going to go over the submissions. Um, for August, it is fantasy characters. Um, we did miss last week, so I have a couple extra for this time around. Everybody loves this theme, apparently. Um, but we'll be going over the lovely submissions for the past two weeks for all of you. This first one is by Bat Kitty. They submitted a few. Um, I love this little lineup of critters that they have going on right here. This is a really good example of, like, having a really simple style, but not quite having, like, being good at, like, getting out of that sort of same face syndrome. So it's, like, it's very, very similar, a uh, very, very simple sort of style, but you do have a wide variety of characters to look at, and I think that's really fun. Thank you for putting them on a white background. Um, <laughs> gray is better on your eyes, but white is a neutral, so thank you <laughs> for doing that. Um, and then just keeping it really simple and having the pickable colors off to the side, just in case you ever need it um, later. Um, don't worry, Kat Kira. There, you have the rest of the month. Um, unfortunately, I am not streaming for the rest of the month, but um, for, I'll be back in September, but this is my last stream of the month. Um, oh my god. My desk. A good thing I have my desk on child lock. Um, but yeah, so this is the first one. These characters look great. Thank you so much, Patty Kitty, for submitting. The next submission is by DJ Honey Badger. Again, they submitted a few. Um, I like the other two with the... You had another dragon that you submitted with, along with this critter, but I really like this composition. I love... I'm a big fan of multiple light sources. I love me some good lighting. I love the, the, like, the blur that you added to the foreground objects to really give it that sort of, like cinematic kind of camera movement sort of look. I love this one. Um, I'm also a really big fan of blues. I, I like blues and yellows when they work together. That complementary sort of palette looks really, really nice. Um, Hollow Knight Core is so true. Um, last stream of the month. Last stream of, with me of the month. You will be having Josh and Iggy, I believe, throughout the, the remaining months. Uh, the remaining uh, weeks of the month. Um, but yes, thank you all. Thank you for submitting, DJ Honey Badger. This looks great. I love your dragon, too. <laughs> the very whip-like dragon. It was very fun. 
Next one is by Dominic. You may recognize this artist from the um, one of the art roast streams that we did. Uh, you were on the roast before, and now you're on the <laughs> the nicer side of it. I'm really happy to see that you took the the advice, like the shading advice, to mine. Um, a, like you took that to heart, and like you also used it with your lighting. It looks so much better. It, like the the contrast is so much nicer. The the, your light source is so much clearer and like the defined edges really helps make this character feel more solid um oh it meant last stream for me yeah fair enough um but well done this is this is me saying well done um and like a kind of a uh, sort of like consolation from the last time that you were you were featured on here um but well done fantastic this looks super good this next submission is by Ami. I love this little ensemble of critters. You said that you were doing, you were making a tabletop game with these guys. I, I love them. I am especially a huge fan of the fox and the frog. I love all of them. And I, I, I love them. I, <laughs> they're so market, marketable plushy esque, and I think that they're amazing. <laughs> I love this sort of simple, bouncy kind of style um, with the very, very saturated shadows. I think that they're. It's kind of difficult to do right, but I think you did a really good job. Um, but yeah, these are these are super super fun. How do you submit? You join the Discord. Join the Discord and submit during the art submissions in the art submissions section. Um, and in that section specifically, you will have to check what the theme of the month is. This month is fantasy characters. But yes, I love those these marketable plushy esque kind of characters. <laughs> They're perfect for something like a TTRPG stuff like that. Um, very well done. Thank you so much. For, thank you so much for submitting. Oh my god. Next one is by Lexicon. This was their Changeling Bard, I believe. Um, a D and D character. I'm a really big fan. We have a we have an, a character as well in our campaign that's like blue skinned, white hair, <laughs> purple outfit, purple and pink outfit. Um, but it's it's a timeless design. I love the I love the look. I'm a huge fan of tails. I just I've said it before. I like tails on characters. If you have the option to give somebody a tail, then do it. Um, this is such a fun design. I love the the subtle like um, celestial kind of aspect of their of their outfit as well. Um, beautiful, beautiful stuff. Well done. Thank you so much for submitting. This next one is by Lee, who we've seen a couple of times before. Lee, uh, stunning as always. The lineless um, style that they have going on. That's like very. It's not. It's simple, but it's still very detailed. Um, relying only on color for all of their forms and it's very effective this character is so cute i love big hat <laughs> big hat big jacked kind of character um with the, the sort of the very creaturey creaturey claws that you've got going on here orange and blue palette timeless of course i love it um amazing i love this piece i love your work as always <laughs> this looks fantastic thank you so much for submitting Next one is by Squibs in the Discord. This was the less spooky of the two, so I chose this one, but I love this design. I was like, I had to sit on this one for a second. I'm like, can I show this? I'm like, yeah, it's a tree, whatever. Um, this one is a beautiful design. Um, a Weeping Blossom, their critter design. I'm a really, really big fan of this one. I love the, it's a, definitely a trope, but I love the trope of having a tree overgrowing somebody. And like, I love that look a lot. Um, it can be so creepy. It shows how like, terrifying and beautiful nature is and like you did a really good job with this one um they're very very spooky but like in a really good way <laughs> thank you so much for submitting and last but not least we have tofu bofu amazing uh, name <laughs> in the discord with their character uh nyx um oh my god i can't remember what the actual oh wait we have a new system for picking things so i can actually check give me a second what kind of bird this is Hang on, I got this. I got this. Give me a second. Uh, the Great Eared Nightjar. Yeah, the Great Eared Nightjar are those birds that kind of look like uh, dragons. <laughs> I'll always say that the the bearded vulture is the most dragony bird. Um, but I love like wing ears. Like that's a an, another weird kind of like trope that I like. But I love wing ears. Um, it's how my, my best friend has their, uh, what do you call it? Their Aarakocra character. 
has those wing ears, and then another friend of ours who is their best friend also has um, an air cocker with the the wing ears. It's it's just a fun it's a fun look, man. Like it's cool. <laughs> when <laughs> like does it need to make sense? Of course not. Who cares? It's cool. It's fantasy. Um, but yes, beautiful design. I love it. Love the colors. I'm a huge fan of earthier tones. Um, but very, very well done. Thank you all so, so much for submitting. Um, all eight of you. I chose eight to kind of make up for both weeks. Um, beautiful, beautiful stuff. If you would like to submit for future weeks, you're going to have to go to the Discord and submit over there. Um, yes, we do handpick them. Us streamers do handpick whatever pieces uh, that we include in the beginning. So... Um, if you would like a chance to be picked by one of us, then uh, you may do so. Uh, again, join the Discord, exclamation point Discord, um, to talk with other people and submit your work. All right. Oh, uh, usually it doesn't last that long, so it's, it's weird to have it last more than like a couple minutes. So we are going to be starting off with Dragonborn. Again, I apologize to all you Skyrim enjoyers. We are going to be talking about... We're going to be talking about D&D &D Dragonborn. Of course, Lexicon. Your work is beautiful. <laughs> I've seen I've seen your stuff a few times uh, in the Discord. Your, your work is great. Um, I know that it says, like, how to draw different fantasy characters. Let's, let me be, like, let me set a stage for you for a second. It's fantasy. There is no such thing as XYZ. This is how you will do it sort of instructions, so I'm gonna be giving you, like, the way that I tend to handle, uh, these kinds of characters, like the species and the races and whatever it is, um, that we'll be going over today. Once I'm done with Dragonborn, I'll ask you all what you would like me to do next, um, and then we will go with that, um, but we are gonna be starting with Dragonborn, and we're gonna talk about how I handle Dragonborn. Um, d, &D Dragonborn are better anyway. So true. I 100% agree. It's after seeing what Skyrim Dragonborn are like, I'm like, oh, that's no fun. Um, rules is written. What exactly is a dragonborn? So in D&D, &D, dragonborn are characters where... I'm just going to draw corn to give you guys, like, an example for a second. Um, dragonborn in D&D &D are characters that are, like, half man, half dragon. Um, rules is written. Dragonborn have the head of a dragon and then are, like, a person's body, but they still have, like, scales and claws and, like, very dragon-like feet. It's stuff like that. Again, also rules as written Dragonborn don't have tails unless you go to um, Exandria, Critical Roles um, world for D&D. &D. Then there are two types of Dragonborn, some with tails and some without. It's the Draco Bloods and the Ravenites. The Ravenites are the ones without tails. Corn is a Draco Blood, so he does have a tail. Um... Will I be showcasing art again later? No. So the art that we showcase is just in the beginning. Um, and then now for the rest of the stream is me just illustrating and talking. But yeah, that's pretty much what a dragonborn is. It's like a half person, half dragon type deal. Uh, I know there's lore with it. I don't remember what it is. I'm going to be totally wrong, honest with you. <laughs> it's like something like, it's like you have like draconian lineage and you have Dra Draco blood in your veins and you were born of like a, like a, like a, a, an unholy matrimony between like a dragon and a person. I don't know. It's something like that. It's <laughs> something edgy like that. But so my way of interpreting Dragonborn um, some dad, mom, dragon, mom, dad, human? That's a good question, because, like, I mean, now it's just like, oh yeah, dragonborn are born from dragonborn, I don't know. My way of handling dragonborn is very much, like, I, because I see how they are in rules as written, I see how they are in, like, very traditional D&D &D and, like, in other sort of, like, games and whatnot, and it's just a dude's body with a dragon head, and that is the most boring thing I've ever seen. Okay, have fun with it. <laughs> I really like to make my dragonborn more dragon than person. I really like to lean into that. Um, so it's like, I don't like to visually have any discerning features as to whether they are men or women. I don't like to... I like to, I like to mess around with the anatomy. I like to really sort of like 
get kind of weird with the way that I draw them. So it, I'll talk a bit about the anatomy that I choose to change. I'll draw more than just corn because corn is like a child. So corn's actually corn is technically 16, but corn's like more of a, a younger body type by comparison to the other dragonborn that I might draw. So I'll draw another dragonborn that I've designed as well. Aren't Dragonborn technically aliens? I do not know where you got that from. <laughs> I mean, that's pretty that's pretty funky if that's what you heard. It's just as good to be a competitive type race? No. It's ironic a dude's body with a dragon head is boring, but I totally agree. So true. You know, it is, right? Because, like, how I've seen it done, right, is you have this, like, crazy detailed, like, just pretend this looks awesome. Just, like, this crazy detailed, like, dragon kind of head, and then it's just a guy. And it's like, okay, awesome. Like, I mean, I guess you can do that, but, like, what's the point? Right? I'm like, that's no fun. It just looks like you put on a mask. Whatever. <laughs> Forgotten Realms Dragonborn are technically aliens? That's nutty. That's really funny, though. I like that. Dragonborn were created by dragons, the primordial plane uh, to be that word, then tried to rebel against the primordial plane dragons and went to the material plane, live free. Is which version of DMD? Is, is that like original? Like DMD 1? Or like a. Like DD 1.0? Or like. Cause yeah, no, I don't, I don't know anything about like the total lore of Dragonborn. I just think that original Dragonborn are boring, and I think we should be more creative with it. Hello, Miguel. Wings of Fire is a deed. Book, good book series. No, that's totally fine. I just can't say it. I know that you didn't mean it in any harmful way. I just can't physically say it for the stream purposes. That's canon? That's hilarious. Oh, it's 2.5e Forgotten Realm. For all you, like, OG D&D &D players, I've been playing for, like, a year, so... <laughs> I really like D&D, &D, but I'm, I've am i only played 5e, so I don't know any difference. I'm doing pretty good, Linux. I hope you're alright as well. I don't want to give my full explanation of how I'm feeling anymore. <laughs> it's a cute character. Thank you. This is Korn. He's my D&D &D character. But yeah, so I really like to kind of... Like, Corrin is a very, like, cartoony example of, like, the Dragonborn that I would draw. So let me just finish up how I draw him really quickly. What a cute name. Yeah! His real name is Mona. Mona Copsi. Um, but Corrin is his nickname. Or it's what he introduced himself as, and now it's stuck. Uh, because everybody learned what his full name was not too long ago. Um, love D&D, dude. Never played D&D, but I use a lot of homebrew design, so inspired character design for my scripts. I love it. D&D just has a lot of really cool sort of, like, races and stuff you can play with. My partner plays as an Eldrin elf, which is, like, a version of elf where, like, they can change seasons. Like, they, they have different forms based on, like, seasons. Uh, he's homebrewed his to make, uh... Pierce is like a, his his seasons change with his emotions, which is really fun. Pierce is a lot going on. <laughs> There's a lot going on with Pierce. Corn, no corn, like the food. C O R N. I love people who try and like spell his name differently, and they're like, "Oh yeah, you don't mean the actual food when you're like writing his name, right?" It's like it's definitely like a cooler stuff. No. It's not. It is Korn. Do you know why? Because when I first was designing Korn, Korn was not a character that started with a lot of backstory. Korn grew into his backstory. Um, I originally wanted Korn to have no backstory at all. I was like, Korn is just a little guy who wants to go on adventures. So his name, I came up with it because I was like, one day I went to go make lunch and my brain was like, your D&D &D character that you're going to play as is going to be named Korn. And I was like, why? And my brain was like, it's, it's going to be that. And I'm like, okay. And then, like, and then his last name is gonna be Chip. And I was like, but why Why would I do that? And my brain was like, because you're gonna do that. And I was like, okay. <laughs> so Korn's name is, Cor like, his full name is Monacopsy. Korn is 
back ship now that he has a proper backstory so his full name is that but originally it was just corn chip that was what his name was the chip is spelled funky but the actual corn is not um and then i was like and then like when i first wanted to design him i wanted to base him off of a what do you call it um uh, i wanted to base him off of the thorny toad which is a type of lizard um, and then, as it turns out, because I'd never played D&D &D before that point, there's no such thing as a yellow dragon, so I was like, okay. Um, like, could I have gone bronze? Could I have gone brass? Sure. But, like, why would I do that? <laughs> so I was like, I was like, okay, well, now what? And then I had to think for a little bit more, and then I was like, I would sell your soul for one corn chip. So corn's name is based off of a meme, and his design is based off of a raven. <laughs> Corn is a black dragonborn. Woo, goodness. I've recently gotten back into writing. I need to redo the character designs because they don't fit with the setting. The setting I use is very humid and the story plays into that. I feel. I understand completely. But yeah, so for me, when I design dragonborn, um, again, we'll use corn as an example for a second. I'll write some notes off to the side. When I design dragonborn, I like to make them more human than or more dragon than human i'm just gonna write it up to the top jesse's jesse's totally comprehensible guide to drawing fantasy Races her way. Because this is going to be in no way rules as written because uh, sometimes I think rules as written is boring. So I want to do something new. Um, so Dragonborn. Um, is corn not yellow? No, corn is black. So corn is a black Dragonborn. I'll show you a full colored version of corn um, in a second. Where is he? Where's my child? Concepts, D&D. &D. I have two versions of corn. So corn, when we started the campaign, looked like this. So he was very, you know, chipper, uh -huh. very, very chipper, very upbeat. This is what corn looks like right now. Um, in the campaign, he's he's not so edgy anymore. Actually, he will be coming up, but <laughs> he's not so like upset looking right now. But um, this is what his outfit looks like now. Um, but yeah, corn is a black dragonborn, yellow eyes kind of character um he's going through a phase well he just learned that uh he he uh k-worded both of his own parents so he's, he's kind of he's not doing so great right now um, or he wasn't doing so great and then he i uh, got over it for a little bit and then uh now one of our party members is uh also d-worded so that's fun um but yeah <laughs> Yeah, no, he's not going through a phase. He's he's going through trauma. That's that's the nature of D and D, baby. Um, can he spit fire? No, he spits acid. When depending on the color dragonborn you are in D and D, you spit a different thing. So because corn is a black dragonborn, he spits acid. Um, so for dragonborn, I tend to make them more dragon in person. Shifted leg joint. So that's my muscle structure. Right? So Dragonborn. So for me personally, I like to make my Dragonborn more dragon than person. I like that shifted leg joint. So I've talked about it if you've been here for the animal streams before. Um, when you draw somebody who has this kind of leg going on, if you have paws, if you got anything going on, this actually isn't quote unquote adding a third joint. You are pushing this joint back. This is your ankle. If you didn't know that, this is your, this is your heel um, joint that's right here. 
and then this is your knee and then this is the top of the thigh right so all you're doing is just shifting the joints because paws and that kind of thing are toes so this kind of leg joint is just shifted joints they're not um adding joints so it's the shifted leg joint the scales follow the muscle structure so corn is a barbarian that's what corn's class is um and like you know he's supposed to be pretty buff um but he's still young um, so what I did by comparison, I, I decided on this as time went on, but what I did instead is that rather than giving Corn like a proper six pack, his scales kind of give that illusion um, of having a lot of like abdomen muscle. Um, and then I have some scales on the top of his shoulders. And then there's actually scales that follow his thigh down here as well um, that are visible. Don't draw every single scale. Don't do that. Not good for you. Um, and then human anatomy is still in there, though, right? Obviously, he's bipedal. <laughs> two arms, two legs, neck that holds the head up, right? Very, very... You still have the human element in there, but it is very dragon-like. Let me draw another one of my dragonborn. Let's draw... Hmm. Who do I want to draw? Let's draw Petri, sure. Petri was the village druid. So this is what my adult dragonborn would look like. When I say I want more <laughs> corn stubby tail. Yeah, corn has a little stubby tail. He's a draconian, so he's got a tail. Um, but this is what I mean when I say like my more adult dragonborn. Um, shifting more to the dragon than the person, right? I love adding that sort of long neck in there. There's still like the arms are here, but the shoulder muscle is pushed forward. Um, like as if... We're supposed to walk on all fours. Um, still the shifted joint back here. But she's old. So she's like old and crotchety. And she has her, <laughs> her legs are kind of back. If I show Cubico. Cubico is more. He's also an adult. But he's like you know standing up on his legs a little more naturally. Um, but yeah you can see like the hands go down to his knees. Which is like arms don't do that. But. <laughs> Um, really shifting that anatomy around. The torso is two-thirds of the body, whereas the legs are only a third. Um, long neck. Again, scales. This, these would be the serratus anterior. If I was to actually draw this out and draw in every single scale, they would be following this kind of shape around the body. Um, so they are just scales, but they're meant to kind of follow that shape. Same with, same with the deltoid up here. Um, following into the bicep, which more scales over here. Kind of thing. Right, so I like my... Have I drawn corn as an adult? I have. Um, I will have to search for that one, though. <laughs> um, do they run on all fours? No, not naturally. Um, but corn has a thing where if he really wants to run... It's a flavor text sort of thing. So, like, if he really wants to run, then he will go on all fours. Um, but because of the nature of their legs, they could possibly run on all fours. Um, what's corn's personality at the moment? Corn is very... He's... <laughs> He's not the he's not the smartest, but he is like because he's young and he doesn't know that much. But he is like weirdly wise. Um, but he kind of just jokes around and says a lot of like really weird things. Asks a lot of questions. He's very curious, kind of bubbly, um, kind of a goody two shoes type. Doesn't really like messing around, which is very funny because there's another kid in the party who is very much like I want to push the envelope, but Corn is not. Um, so Corn is very like sweet and tries to do his best to behave and doesn't like taking charge <laughs> he's very small he's baby corn is baby <laughs> so i'm a teenager no corn's not edgy corn if, if you were thinking of like the more like express version of teenager no corn well corn technically by age is a teenager but he's thought that he thought that he was eight this entire time um but corn is corn is he's doing his best <laughs> Um, lawful good, I don't use those rules. I don't, I don't care for the, the alignment charts. So I never thought about it. Um. Hey, Jaden. Hope you're doing well. Glad to see you popped in. Um. But yeah, so Dragonborn generally, I just kind of like to mess around with those body types. I really like to just kind of push the envelope for how 
I draw like dragony people because I think it's more fun this way. It's kind of like with elves. Yeah, rules is written. Their ears aren't that long, but what's the point <laughs> if they're not like half a foot long? Okay, six inch ears are great. <laughs> really long ears are great. Um, but yeah, dragonborn. I really like to kind of bring. I'm just gonna redraw this sort of thing going on here, such as heel and the knee, right? So there's still three joints, but they're just shifted around a little bit more. If an elf cannot glide with their ears, they are not long enough. So true. Isn't that the truth? I feel, I feel. Um, yeah, let me just doodle like one more dragonborn so I can chat with you guys a little bit more and then we can move on to another fantasy race. I have bird people for my fantasy world. Yeah, there are bird people in D&D as well. They're called Aarakocra. There's Aarakocra, there's Owlin, and there's Kenku. If your DM is boring, they don't allow Aarakocra. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I understand why some people don't add Aarakocra. Flying speed is, like, a little OP for some things. Kenku? No. Um, Kenku. Kenku. Kenku are a race in D&D that don't speak. Um, they're like crow people. <laughs> Most people don't know how to change lanes. Boring. Boring. So listen, man. Come on. <laughs> yeah, I also... Oh, if you didn't notice as well, I also don't like making it obvious which gender my, my dragonborn are. I really like to make it very inconspicuous. Because it's... You look at a lizard, the thing that tells you what, like, gender the lizard is, is it's, like, scale pattern, I think. Maybe. And, like, if not, then, like, there's no way to tell, right? So, like, it's the same thing with dragons. You look at a dragon, it's not like you can immediately tell if it's a girl or a boy, right? So all of my dragonborn, I'm gonna open up a couple more. Um, all of my dragonborn, you cannot tell whether it is male or female. This is Vali, she, her. This is one of the girls. This is Lachesis. He's a dude. Cubico is a dude as well. Um, where you go? Callisto is female. And then there's Petri, who is also female. All right? No distinguishing features, whether they're men or women. Like, I guess the only thing would be the outfits that they wear. But even then, it's like, who cares? Right? <laughs> right? Very androgynous. Yeah, I like my Dragonborn looking very androgynous because I think it's more fun that way. I'm like, I want my dragonborn to be just like, they're dragons. Why would they have, because they like, they come from eggs. Why would, why would you have any sort of those like external things, which would, you know, tell you whether you're female or male, right? So like for a dragonborn, I make it very conspicuous. I, I really like to play into that. Oh, I closed Petri's reference. Um, I really like to make it inconspicuous with the, with Korn specifically, it made the reveal that he was trans a lot better. Because <laughs> it was like, it's you can't physically tell. There's no defining features. So if he tells you, it's like, oh yeah, I'm a dude. It's like, okay. You have no defining way of like being like, oh, it's like, it's like, or were you dude at birth? Or were you what? Wool man at birth? It's like, who cares? Literally, who cares? <laughs> and I think that that's fun. Can you bring up the fully colored corn? Yeah. I can bring up the fully colored corn. I'll use this one because this one's more updated. This is corn's canon outfit that you may notice that I almost never draw. <laughs> because uh, every nothing bad happens in modern AU because uh, my poor boy is very, very dramatized. <laughs> Yeah. 
my poor boy. He was just very sad for a while. He's probably gonna be very sad for another long while coming up. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> your parents got a bummer. Yeah, that and the, the village elder too. And that they lied to you about your age, and apparently you've been a weapon of war in the opposing dragon race. Yeah. It was it was pretty much a bummer to get dropped on you all within like five minutes and shouted at you while you were about to be like executed in front of your entire village. It was it was a lot. It was <laughs> like Corrin has a very valid reason for being kinda edgy for a while. <laughs> If you haven't been severely traumatized, you're really adventuring. Yeah, if you're okay, you wouldn't become an adventurer. That's the tagline of, like, D&D. <laughs> be drawing corn right now, still watch, but only to be 30 or minutes, I won't be chatting. That's totally fine. I appreciate it. I love any and all fan art I get of my children. Depending on the species that we do next, I'll probably draw another one of my children. <laughs> I also based Pet Petri a little bit off of a goat, because I kind of wanted that sort of goat, like with the floppy ears kind of deal. She's a druid, so I wanted that like in tune with nature kind of vibe. When you're drawing dragons, you don't need to only have like, you know, lizards and like lizardy things as your inspiration. I mean, corn is based off of a, like a crow, a magpie, right? So like really take a lot of inspiration from other things because again, it is fantasy. You can do whatever you want, right? Who says that dragons were all super scaly and look just like lizards, right? Like baseline, they're lizards, sure. But you can also have fun with it. Right? Nobody said that they had to only be based on lizards. I'm gonna join the Discord server, heck yeah. Also, all of these, if you do join the Discord server, every bit of, like, all the notes that I take, all the, like, the the files that we do during streams are uploaded as JPEGs afterwards, so you can just take them. Um, like, you can download them, them if you like, just don't, like, repost them. Like, that's my big thing, but, like, other than that, like, yeah, go, go buck wild. <laughs> They're all yours. How would you draw a front profile? How I draw front profiles of like dragons and stuff like that is I tend to break down the face into 3D forms. Um, I'll, I'll try and speed up this doodle of Petri really quickly. Um, I tend to simplify the facial structure um, so that it's easier to break down for later. I loved when I gave my DM the description for Petri, and I was like, Petri's like that kind of like old person who is like really cool and like just kind of is like weirdly like weirdly kind of like not jaded, but they don't like care about a lot, so they're pretty chill and cool. Um, I think the character I gave for comparison was Master Ugwe. <laughs> For Petri specifically. Big wine want vibes. Yeah. Petri's very, very old. For a dragonborn, like, she's very, very old. Um, but yeah, if I was to draw, like, this from the front, like, from the side, I know that, like, this is kind of, like, almost like a long pudding cup sort of shape. And then, like, the main head is, like, a sphere almost. So I think of that. kind of like this it'll be like super foreshortened right so like we have the nose here like this the teeth will be going upwards like this because especially when we have like something that's foreshortened we're not gonna see a lot of the face in its glory so we're gonna have a lot of like compression compression going on so you draw what you see, not what you think you see. The biggest, like, thing that happens when we draw things foreshortened is we try and add things in that we wouldn't actually see. 
So you really have to think to yourself, like, okay, what would I see and what wouldn't I see? So for me, I'm like, okay, I probably wouldn't see how long the face is properly. And these scales would also be super compressed as they're going up her face. By comparison to, like, if I was showing the side of her face, in which then they are much more spaced apart. Right? So it is really just simplifying that form and really smushing it down. Who's my favorite character I've drawn? That's tough. I can't give you an answer. <laughs> because I don't have one. Um, as of, like, my most recent D&D &D character that I've had the most fun drawing. Like, I love drawing Korn, and Korn is, like, my go-to. But I have another... I have a centaur named Strider that I really like drawing. They were a lot of fun to design. So that was, like, that was another character that I really liked. Whoopsies, that's the wrong folder. I was drawing my Dragonborn, so I'm like, oh, this goes in my D&D folder. Um, but da 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 in canvas, stream. There we are. Stream 94! Corn is probably 5 foot 7. Corn is 4 foot 2. <laughs> Corn is very short. No, Corn is 4 foot 2. Petri is 6 foot 11. Uh, she's a, she's a full-size dragonborn. I love him. I also love Corn. Corn's a good time. Petri was also a good time. She was fun to design. Alright, I think that's enough for Dragonborn. I could go on and on about Dragonborn forever, but I will not. Um, so drop your suggestions into chat. What kind of what kind of critters would you like to see me talk about? I did also have things for the polls, if you wanted to just take inspiration from that. Taxi. Uh, centaur, giant centaur, bird people. Lots of centaurs, actually. Tortle! That's, a, that's an answer I didn't think I'd think of. I see. Bird people, imps. Werewolves, mermaid. Werewolf is just a dude. Because <laughs> if you have a werewolf, then it's like there's a werewolf, and then there's just a wolf standing on hind legs. <laughs> um, how do I draw so fast? Years of experience. A myconid. That's also a cool one. Illithid. I see somebody's been playing Baldur's Gate 3. Um... See, everybody's saying, like, really different things. Um... Okay, of, like, the different answers that I'm seeing, the two that seem to be the most popular seem to be, like, centaurs and... What do you call it? Centaurs and werewolves. Which is, like, I'm not gonna be honest, I don't know how to teach a werewolf, but... I also see some imps going on. Imps are weird, because I don't have a method for drawing imps. Tabaxi... Okay. There's also bird people going on too. Alright, we're gonna start a poll. Um, let's do centaur, werewolf. I'm gonna include because I'm gonna have four different No, I'm using um Photoshop. I'm gonna use I'm gonna add four um options. I'm not- I'm not putting it up there yet! Um... Oh, we did a centaur stream that people can check later? Never mind, we're not doing centaurs. I'm sorry, centaur enjoyers. Um... Okay. Because... What was the other ones that people were saying? Yeah, because I saw a lot of werewolves. Imps. Okay. I'm gonna make three options then. Okay, so werewolf... Imp... Oh, fawns are showing up too. Okay, fawn. Alright. Poll is up. Which? <laughs> oh, wait, hang on. There's, I saw a lot of people say bird people, too. We'll put bird people up against that last one as well. Because I'm seeing a lot of bird people popping up now. <laughs> okay. 
Okay, why are you saying Siren Head? That's not a fantasy creature. That's a Trevor Henderson creation. And that's a dude with two sirens on his head. <laughs> I'm seeing... Yeah. No, it's like I'm assuming people are talking about either Rito or Arakakra or Kenku or Owlin. That kind of thing. Okay, so I'll end it here. So we'll put Fawn up against bird people. Because people are now fighting for either fun or bird person. So I will not be doing the critter that starts with a W. Um, I won't even be saying the name just because it is actually, you're not supposed to say it um, for respect out of the indigenous community. Um, so I will not be doing that one. Um, because you're not really supposed to be talking about that one. Um, it's like, if the indigenous community says, let's not talk about those critters, then I will comply. <laughs> yeah, out of respect for them. It's okay, not everyone knows. Alright. It's disrespectful, yeah. No, I, I heard that it was pretty disrespectful because they got so popular within, like, popular media. And I'm like, and then I, like, I saw a lot of people say, like, hey, you're not actually supposed to talk about those. And I'm like, okay, I get it. Oh, you finished him? Alright, looks like bird person is winning. Um, I cannot go over all of the bird people that exist, <laughs> um, but I will do my best to go over some. <laughs> so general bird people, I'm going to be honest, I haven't really designed an Aarakocra. Yeah, no, I haven't designed an Aarakocra before for myself. Um, bird people. Harpy Aarakocra? Those are two things. <laughs> two different things. Um, I'm also going to be totally honest. I've never drawn a Harpy before. <laughs> it's like the, the, when I first saw a Harpy, I read about them in Percy Jackson. And that's a, the extent of knowledge that I have about Harpies. Because I, at the time, I did not care for them. Like, I didn't hate them, but it was never a thing that I hyperfixated on. Oh, like a harpy eagle. Oh, I mean, there's a Greek mythology critter called a harpy. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, bird people, I have the same sort of ultra, my, my friend's bird person. I'll draw a lotus um, for now, and then I'll draw an Arito. Because do I have Tulin memorized? No, but I can look up a reference. But I do have Lotus memorized, so this is my friend's character, not mine. I actually don't have an Aarakocker character. But I'll give some just general tips while I'm drawing her. So, with this Aarakocker specifically, she is homebrewed, so she does still have a person's face. Um, there are some, like, Aarakocker rules as written have a bird person's face, like a bird's face. Um, Lotus doesn't have that, uh, neither does Dolus, her brother. Um, but the, but this character is homebrewed, um, so again, rules is written, uh, bird people do have bird faces, um, I will be drawing a Rito after this, because I totally forgot that Rito are a thing. Um, <laughs> Tulin, yeah, from Tears of the Kingdom. I'm so sorry if that's a spoiler for some people, I just totally realized that that might actually be a spoiler. I will speak no further on the matter, but yeah, so she has the, the like wing ears kind of thing going on. Um, when I was younger, I had a, a race of bird people um, that also had these wing ear things. And I think that wing ears are just cool. Yeah, 
yeah, no, I know what a harpy is. I've just never drawn one before. <laughs> In your community tab? I'm gonna be totally honest, I don't think I'll be able to see that. If you wanna show me, you can post it in the Discord if you're not there yet. Yes, I do. My, okay, so again, I have totally forgot to actually start talking about this. For me, when I draw bird people, there's a really big pet peeve that I have with people in wing with wings in general. Um, when you are drawing people with wings, you need to make sure that the wingspan is large enough to carry the person if they're going to be flying. So wings, um, the actual muscle of the wing will act, will start from the shoulders and will probably go to around here. But the feathers themselves will probably end at around, like, the knees or the hips. They need to be large. Like, they need to be big, big if you want a bird person to be able to fly. I am not going to be going over wing anatomy. I apologize if that's why a lot of you wanted bird people. Um, we have streams already on bird anatomy. If you want to check those out for how to draw wings. Um, so I'll just be very quickly going over like the things that I like to do when drawing just bird people. Um, but if you wanted wing anatomy, I will not be covering that because that's going to take way too long. Um, the main thing that I'm just going to say is you need to make them big enough for the person. Kyle brushes, they come with Photoshop. They're Photoshop default brushes. They are phenomenal brushes. I also do the three joint thing with birds. Technically with birds, their thigh, quote unquote, is hidden within their feathers. So you actually can't see that third joint, you can only see them moving backwards. If you've ever seen a bird and you're like, hey, but they don't actually have that third joint. They do. You just can't see them. So I like to give that third joint in there. Make the feet really large because bird legs are very thin. So you need a wide base to be able to carry the person properly. Yep, but there are flightless birds in nature, of course. If you're going to be basing your Aarakocra off of a flightless bird, you totally can. But if you are basing them off of an eagle, and then you have them flying, and the wings are down here and this small, I will look at you funny. Because that's wrong, and that doesn't work. <laughs> that's a half joke. It's fantasy, who cares? But also, it's a pet peeve of mine. <laughs> it's a pet peeve of mine in design. If you have wings down there, and they're like, just, they're like vestigial wings, and they don't actually fly, that's fine. But, like, if you're going to be drawing, like, a bird and, like, a bird person and they're going to be flying, just make sure that those wings are capable of flight. Because, yeah, 100%. If you're going to be drawing, uh, like, a bird person and they're based on a flightless bird, you can make those wings whatever size you want and in whatever placement. Because not all birds can fly. But if you're going to be drawing a bird person that can fly, uh, just get it right. <laughs> Pet peeve for me is when characters have wings, but they aren't attached to the body at all. I That one annoys me if the wings are, like, not summoned. Like, they're just there constantly. Like, they're non-magical. And they're just, like, this force that they just have. And I'm like, okay, well, what's the point? But if they are, like, a magical summon kind of way, like, that's fine. I Like, I don't mind that at all. Penguin. If any of you know that reference, that penguin reference, then you were on Tumblr in 2014 and I see you. I know what you are. Animating while watching stream. Let's go. Of course, Emmy. They looked great. 
Yeah, I like to do the third joint to make sure the wings are big enough. I'll be drawing the wings in a second. I tend to draw the wings last unless we are looking at the person from, like, the back, in which then the wings are going to be covering up a good majority of the body. But if not, then, like, we're probably not going to make the wings you can leave for last. Just a bird person. This is my this is my best friend's character, Lotus. She's an Aarakocra, so this is a D&D &D thing. But notice how just la whoopsies. Excuse me. I know. I know. Okay. Notice how just large I'm instantly making these wings. You want to make them big enough to actually be able to allow flight to the person. Generally, the rule for that is like twice the size or more. Because it also is dependent on the person's weight and you are like a... Like, bird wings aren't necessarily twice the size of the bird, but birds have hollow bones. So they're lighter than, like, you and I, who have dense bones. We have, like, you know... Our bones are not hollow. They are filled with meat, actually, if you didn't know that. So we're a lot heavier than the traditional bird would be. Um, so not all birds have that dual size wing... Oh boy, that don't fit in a dungeon. She can fold them. <laughs> She's just flying right now. Bone marrow. Yeah. You ever eaten bone marrow before? Bone marrow is delicious. Kind of hard to draw the wing from this angle. This is totally not correct, but that's okay. So this should actually be more fold like that. Oh, this whole wing should be higher. <laughs> that's why. we go. No, don't eat that. You've never had- no, bone marrow is just a dish. It's an actual food you can have. <laughs> you can buy bone marrow. Bone marrow is a real food you can have. It's kind of like eating beef tartare. Like, it's, it's a real food you can have. It's a little weird when you first hear about it, but it is a proper dish. Whose bone did you eat? A cow's. <laughs> Where do their wings connect? I will be talking about that in a moment. So, I'm gonna make this a lot smaller. So for bird people in general, I also like to have the, the shifted joint. In legs. Larger wings to support. Body weight. Larger feet. Thinner legs. For support. Generally, when I draw the like the feathers them or like the wings themselves, where I connect them is on the shoulder blades. So you can imagine it like. If I was to attach this on a person, do I remember how to do this muscle? I think I do. If we can envision this like this, if this is our rib cage right here, our scapula would be right here. Those are our 
are like shoulder blades that are on top of the rib cage. The arm is connected on the inside of the scapula right here, so you can envision them as if they're actually just another extension of the scapula. So the wing kind of just generally attaches on top of the scapula area, like here, and the muscle continues downwards and follows the trapezius going down the back. Um, so then it would kind of fold upwards like that. I'm gonna just highlight this somehow. Attaches. Next scapula. And trapezius. Like one third to two thirds. And the back. That's a little painful, don't you think? I don't know where else they would attach them, Desiree. I'm gonna be totally honest. <laughs> like, this feels like the the most... Like, this is what most people agree on. It's like, yeah, the, the wing would connect to the shoulder blade because there is no other place they would go. The shoulder blade controls the raising and lowering of our arms um, along with our neck bone. I'm gonna do something to you that's gonna make you feel really uncomfortable. So... You're going to feel the top of your shoulder for me. Um, you can kind of move it around, right? You're going to trace the top of your shoulder and then trace back to your collarbone. Now go back on your collarbone, go back to the top of your shoulder, and then go towards your back. You can kind of feel as if there's like a letter C or a letter V going around. This is because your... Um, your collarbone and your scapula are attached. Those are the only two bones that are holding your arms up on your body. The, the top of your shoulder is called your acromion process. That is the connection point between your scapula and your collarbone. The acromion process um, is right there. That's what holds the two of them together. And then within your shoulder blade, that is where there's a fossa within there. And that is where your arm is attached. So if you thought that up here, right, right here is where your arm is attached, you're wrong. It's actually down here. On the inside of your scapula, and that is where your humerus is attached. I already knew that. That's awesome, Jeremiah. But there you go. If you broke your collarbone, would your arm fall down? You? Yes, you're correct. Your arm would not be your... It's called the shoulder girdle, if you didn't know. So the collarbone and the scapula are the two that are holding your arm up. So if your collarbone breaks, then you are not able to support your arm. This is why when you have a broken collarbone, the whole arm is in a sling. Because, you know, the collarbone is what helps control the arm. So if you have one of your collarbones broken, that entire arm needs to not move so that it can heal. But yeah, so the wing attaches to the scapula of the trapezius generally, so a third to two thirds down the back. If I were to draw a bird person, like a, let's, let's go with like a, a Rito. And I draw Tulin. I'm so sorry to all of you. I do not feel like drawing Gravali. <laughs> Tears of the Kingdom post, like, get fairly popular online for a time. It was Tulin asking Link if he's got games on the Sheikah Slate. <laughs> that was a fun one to draw. Doesn't haunt me as much as the Professor Turo that I draw drew as much. I like cast the most, if anything, that's real. I love Tulin, dude. So cute. I love this character.
When do I usually learn this? What do you mean, when do I learn this? Like, what stage of life? I don't know. I figured it out. <laughs> Tulin's voice actor is also the voice actor of Hestude. It's awesome, because they're both really cute characters. Yeah! No, it's great. She liked the the voice actor for Tulin. She liked the post that I drew. It was cool. <laughs> and then, um... What's his name? The voice actor for Ravali, and then replied to the... <laughs> he replied to my tweet, and that was cool. <laughs> I was like, oh! I recognize both of those names! <laughs> my favorite food? Uh, Eggs Benedict. I forgot his little feather ponytail. <laughs> Am I still drawing the same person? No, I have two two characters here for bird people. Rito are like, their wings are like kind of unrealistic, but they have that sort of fantasy thing where like their feathers also double as fingers, which is like a, to like a total choice. Like it's one of those things where it's like, is it unrealistic? Yeah, but like in the case of this, it's like, it's fine. <laughs> it's whatever. Rito are also cool because, like, two-thirds of their body are their torso, and then the remaining, like, third is their legs. Which I think is pretty fun. And they have two claws in front, two claws in back, which is what some birds have. Um, like, budgies have that. Uh, a lot of parrots have that. Pigeons, uh, lotus is a pigeon. Pigeons have three in front, two in back. Um, so it really depends on the bird that you're going for, um, for whether it is one or the other. I don't know how to draw his outfit. <laughs> I don't know how to draw this character's outfit. I, uh, okay, hang on. I got this. I'm not gonna fully, I'm not gonna full send this, this outfit. I'm just gonna very quickly like work with it. I've drawn it once. I'm not going to do it again. <laughs> so when you're drawing beaks, because I know that if you are drawing bird people, you also probably wanted to know because you don't like drawing beaks from the front. A beak. Think of a beak. A triangular prism. Right? So you think of a triangular pyramid. So if you kind of think of it as if it is like the the top part of the beak is attaching like it's the top of the the point of the pyramid almost is at the top of the face and then the flat part comes more forward then it is a little bit easier to draw it in multiple angles. like that. Duck beaks are rounded, then you can imagine it is an oval-based pyramid, <laughs> right? If you wanted to do the triangular-based pyramid, if you wanted to think of it as like a, like a, 
like a sort of like half hockey puck shape, right? Whatever sort of shape that you want to think of, think of it as a form first before the actual... Think of it as a form first before anything. Right, again, duck bills, if it's rounded, then think of it as like an oval base, and then you can have like two oval, it's like a flat cylinder, right? Maybe you want to do that. Goose also works for that too. If you have like a, actually an eagle is pretty triangular. You can also think of a diamond, like that's also something you can do too, square base pyramid, diamond base sort of thing. Beak is curves downwards like an ibis, triangular base pyramid, curve the edges downwards. Easy. Don't overcomplicate things. So go, but Jesse, it's X shape, Y shape, then draw that shape. <laughs> Don't come crying to me about it. <laughs> How would bird feet look front facing? It's the same deal as like if I was to tell you to draw a foot front facing. So like you are a fingers front facing, you can break them down into like almost these like sort of bean shapes. The final, but what I do generally is I have like one bean, two bean, and then like a like a circle at the end, which then can have have like the talon. So if I was to draw that from the front, I can envision them as if they were like cylinders. If you're more familiar with foreshortening, um, or like just perspective in general, the tip that everybody always gives, like advanced artists always give other advanced artists, is think of it as stacking shapes. So if you have like your foot kind of right here don't try to like okay it's like there's one cylinder here there's the next cylinder here stack shapes don't think of it like that so think of what the shape of that one joint would look like then the next shape of the next joint then the next shape and the next joint erase the centers and then think of like the shape of the claw from the front which doesn't make a lot of sense if you're not too into like foreshortening or perspective or anything like that guess what you're gonna have to learn so this is one way for you to do that but if you are just beginning you're not too sure how to stack shapes doesn't make sense to you you know you're an advanced artist if stack shapes quote unquote make sense to you but if it doesn't then you'll want to use like a cylinder so like go with a cylinder use the ring method go backwards into space add your talon same thing here Go back into space, add your talon, go back into space, add your talon, right? Because that's a way that you can make it work as well. Drawing anything from the front, from the side, there are methods that work for every single one. Like, it doesn't matter what you draw from the front or anything. If you've ever heard somebody say like, oh, do the spring method, do the ring method, stuff like that for drawing your things in perspective, it'll work for literally anything. <laughs> right it's not like it's like oh i know how to do this for the human arm but like how do you do it for bird feet it is the exact same i promise you so if you have like because they're both like cylindrically based right so if you have like you know people will say like oh i'm gonna draw a person i have the base of the arm and then i'm gonna draw this sort of coming outwards is like the the hand coming towards me Right? Like, I've got, like, a foreshortened hand going on here. Right? And you're like, oh, well, I know how to do that for an arm, but I don't know how to draw it for a foot. It is the exact same thing. You just have your... Actually, that, that looks bad. But it's, it's the same for everything. It looks exactly the same. That stack shape tip. No problem. Yeah, I think... Ice Yoke for sure gets that one. <laughs> Talk about an advanced artist. Um... So thank you. I'm trying to show all the shapes. It's a habit I must break and learn to cover somebody I need to. Yeah, don't draw what you can't see. Like, don't think like, oh, it's like I, it's like I'm foreshortening. It's like I should, but like I can't see this in this perspective. But I want to force it into the perspective. Don't do that. That's that's bad. That doesn't work. All right. A lot of you wanted fawns, for, so for the sake of time, I am actually gonna go into fawns. Fawns are not too bad. Fawns are actually very similar to centaurs. <laughs> yeah, cubes. Ooh, 
we so we are gonna go into fawns because like um and then we'll do one more poll for or not one more poll but one more ask because fawns should not take long fawns are really really easy like it's really not that bad i don't have a fawn character oh yes i do never mind yes i do I think I've ever talked about Cliff before. I mean, like, I've talked about him, but I haven't, like, talked about him. Like, I've, I've had Cliff in passing. I love it when people are like, it's like, who's Cliff? And then, like, mods or, like, people who've been here long enough are like, oh, Cliff. <laughs> Cliff is my paladin fawn. Once again, me being like, I don't feel like making this person a deer. You're a reindeer now. Um, Cliff is my reindeer paladin. Um, I've never drawn him before. I've never played him before, but he was a concept I had a long time ago. Exactly now what? <laughs> exactly. But fawns are not too bad because fawns are quite literally just, it's a person on top and then you have goat legs. So it's not like there's anything diff that difficult when it comes to actually drawing their anatomy because it is quite literally just a person. Like it's not like it's crazy to envision in any way, you know? Satyrs and fawns, yeah. I love his outfit. Thank you. He has a deep southern accent and likes to cook barbecue and says stuff like, we'll all be. <laughs> I wanted him to be like the nicest guy ever. <laughs> like he's six foot eight. He towers above you. He's kind of scary looking. At first glance, but he's like a like a teddy bear. Like he's so nice. Like that was what I wanted for Cliff. He says howdy too. Like that's how he'll greet you. I haven't drawn Cliff in a very long time. Bear with me. I haven't. I'm also really not great with beards. Despite popular belief. <laughs> well, that bear don't hurt. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Love a character like that, yeah. Do, do a video on how to draw epic fantasy armor? That is a video for Iggy. I actually don't have a method because I don't know how to do it either. <laughs> I know Iggy really likes armor. Um... I am the type of person where it's like, if I need to draw armor, I will figure it out on my own. And I have no method or rhyme or reason. It's like, I will look up a bajillion references and then come up with what I like and what I don't like based off of the shape language. That's how a lot of the things that I draw are. It's like, Jesse, how do you draw this? What's your method for drawing this? I have no method. You know what my method is? References and figuring it out. <laughs> Which is like, it's, it's one of those things that's like, a, a lot of like newer artists don't like hearing that it's like it's like how do i draw this references that doesn't tell me anything well that's kind of how it is <laughs> especially when designing when you design something you don't actually have to know how to draw it off the top of your head you can you can draw anything if you're a designer you just need enough references you can draw anything if you're an artist you just need enough references and know how to reference things so that's how i feel about this is one of the reasons why i don't have mechs um, on, like, my commissions. Like, my commissions are open right now. And, like, I got a couple questions. Like, so what do you mean by, like, you don't draw mechs? Like, you don't draw, like, anything robotic? And I'm like, no. Like, I will draw robotic things, but I don't trust myself enough to design a mech for you, so I just don't offer it. Love characters with ears like that. Yeah, he's a reindeer. <laughs> Again, there's another it's another signature of me being like, listen, I'm like, I could totally go like rules is written with you. But like I'm not gonna <laughs> because like what's the point, right? 
Rules are there for a reason. Yeah, and rules are meant to be broken. You're not fun. <laughs> and here's here's my my philosophy with D&D, right? If I want to change the design and it doesn't change the mechanics of the character in any way, then, like, why are you saying no? Right? <laughs> like, you could say, like, oh, it's rules is written. It's like they say that they have to be this or have to be that. The only way that I'd, like, be like, oh, it's like, that makes sense why you can't really change that aspect is if it changes the, like, race mechanically. Then you have to be like, okay, well, you can work something out with that with your DM if you'd like. But if the DM's like, I don't really want to like work with that in the campaign then like that's fine but like i think that like if they visually are different but it doesn't change the race at all like i added a tail on corin and i know that like dragonborn don't have like a tail attack stat um so i'm like i'm like i'm gonna make this tail like vestigial basically so it's like it's there but he can't do anything with it then it's like well, that's fine right i'm like he's not doing anything Right? It's like my centaur is uh, half ibex. He's a goat, right? So it's like, it's different from a horse, sure, but it's a quadrupedal ungulagrade creature. Like, it's not like it's any different, really. They have horns, and that's the difference. What digital platform are you using to draw? Exclamation point. DMs, am I right? No, K is my DM. <laughs> That's my DM in chat right now. Kay is very open with me changing things. <laughs> Kay's great. Kay's a fantastic DM. Um, Kay lets me change things visually all the time. We can do whatever we want. <laughs> because, like, I try not to change anything mechanically. Or, like, too heavily mechanically, anyway. To the point where it's like, it's like, oh, this is, like, a totally homebrewed race. But even then, it's like, you can work with your DM with that, too, if you want. Are Cliff's people's horizontal or rounded? They are rounded here. You can see, zoom in. That's what Cliff's face looks like up close. He has rounded people's. He's got those deep chocolate brown eyes. <laughs> Hoof hands with thumb? No. <laughs> He's just got red, red normal person hands. I think I've I think I've noticed somebody complaining. I'm sorry if I don't see your message. I am like drawing at the same time. So like and the chat is going fairly quickly. So like if I don't see your message, I apologize, but I can't read everything out all the time. Please be patient with me. <laughs> I have one pair of eyes. <laughs> I love that example you gave was for a Dragonborn Tails in the world setting. There literally are Dragonborn with tails. No, 100%. Like, in the world setting, they do have tails. But, like, I, like, have seen, like, I've had commissioners who complained, like, oh, it's like your Dragonborn don't have tails. Fantastic. That's rules is written. It's like, I hate it when people give Dragonborn tails. I'm like, okay, but <laughs> in this world setting, they do have tails. It's like, you can homebrew a design as much as you want, right? And it's like, that's totally fine. It's like, I did it in a way where it's like, you know, it doesn't really change him mechanically, but like, in that world setting specifically, it's like, they definitely do have tails, but I'm just like, like, if it doesn't change anything mechanically about the character, I think it should be allowed. If there are some things that the DM is planning and it's like, oh, you can't have this visual because XYZ, that's fine, like, whatever, but... Like, I think if there's no explanation, it's just like, no, it's, it's not rules is written, then it's like... Stop. You're being annoying. You can check our Insta. Kevin, don't give them my Instagram. <laughs> my Insta- And also, hi, by the way. Um, my Instagram I haven't used in forever. It's- It's- I mean, I guess you can give them my Instagram, but, like... My handle can just be- If you- If- If there's a social media platform you use, I'm probably on it. You can find me there. <laughs> I let you guys do whatever you want because who minds character customization in a world of tragedy? Yeah, exactly. Tablets and stylus, you don't have to have them to draw, but it does help ergonomically in the long run, which is super important for your health. Yeah, 100%. The next part of that video is coming out soon, by the way. Oh, I, f I need to record something for that. That's right. I forgot. <laughs>
he posted something today. Yeah, that's the first thing I've posted since June. <laughs> I, I use Instagram. I just don't post anything. Like, that's, that's my biggest thing is it's like I use, I'm on Instagram very frequently. I just don't post anything because I'm like, I don't like managing more than one social media platform. I use my fingers on a phone, it's the easiest to control for me. That screen is so bad for your eyes if it's just on a phone. Yeah, let me talk about fawns slash satyrs for a bit. Traditionally, fawns and satyrs are deer. Um, like, just normal, like... Like woodland deer, I clearly have decided to just make him a reindeer because I think that's fun. Um, it is just a person. It's a person with like goat or like deer legs, right? Oh, I think it's fawn or fawn or deer, satyr or goats. I think that's the difference, or it's the other way around. I don't totally remember. Um, but either way, it is a person up top and then deer slash fa like deer slash goat slash whatever on bottom, right? So you, of course, do have the triple jointed leg. You've got the ungulagrade feet. Actually, it's quadruple because now we're even shift, we're shifting them even more. So it's like you have one, two, three, and then four joint. If you didn't know that, I'll go over that again. But if you want a more in-depth explanation of that, we do have a video on that already. Um, I believe I talk about it in the mammal video, right? Somebody remind me. I don't totally remember. It's Seder. 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 That's that's the only way I've heard it pronounced anyway. Not Satar. Have you covered a more popular species like dragons? I did dragonborn. <laughs> but no, not specifically dragons. I'm certain I've talked about dragons before, though. Like, that is not a topic that I would not have talked about. Dragons are just, like, it's it's a lizard with bird anatomy. Like, it's... <laughs> that one's also, like... It's like, you want references for dragons? Look up birds, not lizards. See the type to be a father figure? Oh yeah, he's like your nice uncle. <laughs> he's like your really nice uncle that'll buy you things. Who's like a, he's very easy to, to like, um, he's very easy to convince. It's kind of a pushover. <laughs> yeah. I, I wrote Cliff as a really nice guy. He's like, he's like a divorced man who's just a really nice dude. I think I gave him an ex-husband. I don't remember. I don't think I ever wrote who the ex-husband was though. I think I decided that with my partner. I was like, should I give him an ex-husband or ex-wife? And my partner was like, ex-husband. And I was like, all right. <laughs> Draw incredibly fast. Thank you. Yeah, I like drawing speed. Who would divorce him? I don't know. <laughs> I didn't get that far. <laughs> Asgore Undertale Gore! It's so true! <laughs> no, it's so true! <laughs> He's a reindeer instead of a goat. I think, I, I think that was another thing I decided, um, Victoria. I was like... I think that was another thing I decided with a partner. I think I just decided on gay. I was like, I was like, he's either, I was like, do I make him like bi or gay? And my partner was like, gay. And I'm like, all right. <laughs> Ask Gore if he slayed. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Yo, so true. Reminds me of my stepdad look wise. He can kind of grumpy sometimes. He's very sweet and funny. <laughs> I love it. 
But yeah, he would absolutely be kind of like a father figure sort of type. Likes to barbecue. He's very dad like. That was that was another this is my this is my like dad character. That was another thing I, I wrote, despite him not actually being a father. <laughs> Yeah, he's a really nice uncle that you want to go to, that you're really excited to go visit on weekends. Wears nothing but flannels and cargo shorts. And you're convinced that he chops like he's a lumber, like a lumberjack, but he's not. He actually works like a home office job and really likes baking. Yasgor! Yes! <laughs> Give him a garden. I will. I will. Just because you said I see you, I absolutely will now. Yeah, he does have that dad energy. There's a there's a the the character that my my partner plays in the campaign that I play in. Um, Pierce. Pierce like just adopted Corin. Pierce is like the the like young dad of the party. Lunin is like the old seasoned father. Who's another character in the campaign? I just realized I drew these hands way too large. Give me a second. <laughs> Like they can be bigger, but they shouldn't be, like, horrifically ginormous. Yeah, bear with me. I haven't drawn this guy in a long time. He's a mix of Asgore and Toriel? That's a good question. I haven't played Undertale since 2014. <laughs> Nor have I interacted with the community since. Yeah, we can't know really. <laughs> I was like, no, no, we cannot. Not again. Where did the goat part of his leg start? They start at the knees. Stuff in the knees, the goat part extend all the way to his hips. Technically, that's up to you. So when you're drawing, that's another thing. So for me, I like to have it start at the hips. So I'm like, I like to start the goat part when we have the torso happening. Some people like to start it just down here. Um, but for me, it makes the most sense to start it at the hips just because, like, that's where all the joints will start being different is at the hips. Um, cause, like, you know, for people, we just have the, like, you know, we have the, like, our thighs and then our... Uh, calves and then it's just our full foot on the ground we call that plantigrade but if it's like a fa if it's like a, a deer it's like they only have their toes touching the ground um that's why they're called unguligrades unguligrades only have like technically it's their nail but it's like they only have like a nail slash toe touching the ground um so like their their joints will be different by comparison to if um I only have one dad outfit, apparently. <laughs> I just realized. I'm like, this is the exact same outfit I would have given Pierce if I was drawing him. Um, but yeah, it's like, it, it, like the, the joints start to get different when it's below the hips, so I personally like having it, so it's like the goat legs actually start at the hips but if you want to like do it differently that's totally okay too you're just gonna have to figure out how those joints work and how the muscle will will like you know feel correct in that regard i love the idea that he can't pronounce worcestershire sauce <laughs> i don't know maybe he can't Cowsy in the making. I had. I remember when it was Year of the Bull. I made two like cow characters. It was like, what was it? I think it was. Only one of my friends knows this because it was like I. I designed them forever ago. Hang on. I don't think I'll be able to find them anymore. They were brothers. There was like there was like a small. It was like the duo where it's like small and like evil and then friendly like like a like a friendly giant and i cannot remember i know the little one was named bluebell i don't remember what the big one was named um but they had like proper cow names like it was like they had proper like cattle names and i can't remember it for the life of me because i only i designed them specifically for year of the bull and i don't remember and i never used them after that 
Our deer not digitigrade? What's the difference? I will explain it in a moment. Because no, they are not digitigrade. They are ungulagrade, along with horses and reindeer and goats. Poor Cliff. <laughs> It's okay. He's alright. He can handle himself. He's a paladin, after all. Many types of fawn-like. Some are very bent and others are very human-like. They also have vary depending on whether you're going for deer references or goats. Yeah, they do have the same sort of general goat- or, like, ungulagate structure, but they will look different depending on whatever critter you're going for. Um, I personally like the look of really bent legs. I'm not, like, the type to skimp out on that kind of joint ever. <laughs> I think that it's more fun that way. But yeah, fun. This is one of those ones where I'm very just by the books. So it's half... Half person, half... On the grade. I'll talk about what that means in a second, even though I've already talked about it. Start at hips and below due to joint changes. Ears. Become appointed. Well. Right, so it's half person, half ungula grade. It starts at the hips and below due to joint changes. Um, ears are become the appointed animal ear, so if it's a reindeer, you give them reindeer ears. If it's a goat, you give them goat ears, so on and so forth. Horns and antlers, if relevant, because some deer don't actually have really large horns, so you might just have them hidden at the hair or something. Um, stuff like that. Um, that means I'm not trying them in a while. Thank you. Yeah, it's been like a year, I think. <laughs> um... Why on earth do I draw better in the evenings when I need to sleep rather than in the day? Like, literally how? Because your hand is probably warmed up by that point. Um, but yes, ungulo grade. So, if we have a digit of grade leg... We have one, two, three, right? Those are where your joints are. And then we have our toes. With ungulo grades... It is one, two, three, four. All right, so what on Gula grade? It's toe on the ground, and this one is, or it's this one is nail on the ground. And this one is toes on ground. The difference between this is if you had your... If you drew this as if it was like a person's leg. This one is if the person is standing on their tippy toes like this. And this one is as if the person... is standing on one toe. It's a very precise difference. But this one is ungula grade. Like, right is ungula grade. Left is... digita grade. So, like, cats, dogs, stuff like that are digita grades. And then, like... Horses, deer, goats are on the grade. Hello, welcome in. Um, but yeah, fawns generally, that kind of deal.
Human on Google Grade looks painful. Yeah, no, 100%. I'm also going to explain tails if you decide to add a tail. Horns, antler, tail. If relevant. Apologies, I'm not coloring any of these. I want to get through a good chunk. So what's it called when the knee is the only knee? Do you mean like us? Like if you have just like a leg like this and then your whole foot is on the ground? That's called plantigrade because you are planted on the ground. So us, uh, bears, kangaroo, um, yeah, those are all plantigrade, plantigrade legs. So it's like the heel is touching the ground. Elephants as well, yes, thank you. Tails would happen at the base of the spine, right? Yes. Yes, I am going to draw it for you, though. Did some research from fawn legs and actually found out that it is legit impossible for a fawn to walk around with their leg shape. Said it would put a lot of strain on the muscle. This is why all ungula grades are quadruped. And this is why a lot of digitigrades are also quadruped. Think about it. What do you know an animal that is digitigrade that walks on two legs? You probably don't. If you've ever seen a dog stand up on its hind legs, it can't do that for too long. Same with cats. Because it doesn't actually have the support on the ground that it needs to hold up its entire body mass. So yeah. Realistically speaking, no. Ungulagrades nor digitigrades should ever be... Um, what do you call it? Um, bipedal. Quadruped, four legs. The hardest thing I've ever drawn, a detailed jeep from the inside. I don't like cars. Kangaroos digitigrade? No, kangaroos are actually plantigrade. If you think of their legs, when they are sitting down and upright their feet actually go on the ground like this. So their back ankle actually does touch the ground. So when they are standing upright, they are plantigrade. When they hop around, they stand up on their toes, but that's to help them spring. They have very strong haunches that help them move around, but they do not stand upright on their digits. When they're standing upright, they are back on their haunches to give them that support. I know Daria really likes Cliff. <laughs> I don't know if Daria's here right now, but I know that Daria really likes Cliff. Much better help than my mammal anatomy book. I appreciate it. I had a weird fixation on anatomy. Anatomy is one of my favorite lessons to teach. I love teaching anatomy. I love teaching color theory. They're like two of my favorite things ever to talk about because I love the science of art. I think that the science of art makes art so much more interesting. The people who refuse to learn the science of art can be like, it's 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 no fun, man. Like, I'm like, it's so cool to see how like science integrates itself into artwork, you know? Like, even if you decide to break the rules, right? If you have a fond character, you're already breaking an anatomical rules. But it's, like, it's fun, dude. <laughs> to figure out how it would work. Very strong tendons for hopping. Yeah. Birds, aren't they digitigrade? Correct. Birds are indeed digitigrade. I've talked about it earlier. If you look at a bird with its thing, like it kind of looks like it's just back like this and then you have the rest of the bird. The pelvis of the bird is back here. You have the knee joint right here. It is hidden within the feathers generally. So yes, birds do have that triple joint. It's just hidden within the fluffy bits. So you don't actually see it. And most people only see those final two joints. If you didn't know that.
creating a species to make stuff fit, right? Yeah, hundred percent. It's like I think that the science of art can really help make your work just feel more concrete, and then you'll also be able to explain. And it's also a cool party trick to tell people different facts about their body, and then they get really upset that they now are aware of the things that their body can do. If you feel your elbow for me, if you want to do this, if you feel your elbow, it's called your olecranon. If you touch that little bit and keep your hand there, and then extend your arm. Right, so bend your arm, feel your elbow, and then extend your arm out with your hand still on your elbow. You can feel that the bump kind of becomes flush with the rest of your body. This is because your humerus, the bone upwards on the upper side, has a little slot that your olecranon fits into perfectly. You are built like a Lego piece. You're welcome. Have you ever seen Owl Without Feathers? Scary stuff. Yeah, it's pretty funny. <laughs> I think it's cool. Kind of like seeing a baby owl. I am Lego. You are Lego. Say it with me, chat. I am Lego. Yes. Have <laughs> you referred to it as Legos? Yeah. I am Lego. I am Lego indeed. <laughs> It's when I learned anatomy in university, it's like the only university course I really liked, um, like a crazy amount. Um, I really liked learning, like the way that she taught it was really good because she, um, she was a yoga instructor. So the way that she taught us like different parts of the body um, was by getting us to actually like feel around and do yoga moves so we could feel parts of our body moving. So it was like, it really helped me memorize a lot of the things she taught. And she also had, like, fun ways of us remembering it. And she would tell us to say things a specific way. Research the etymology of digitigrade and learned that tardigrade means slow stepper. That's cool. I didn't know that one. <laughs> that was one I didn't know. Does a knee do the similar thing as an elbow? No. So your knee actually is a completely different bone. So if you have your actually, if you want to if you're sitting already, extend your leg so that you're not using any of your muscle. So you're just sitting with your legs flat on the ground. If you want to feel this. So your femur up here and your tibia, I believe. You, I, I mix up the tibia and fibia a lot. I used to know it very well. Hang on. Tibia. Okay, yeah. Tibia is the bigger one. That's what I thought. So your tibia up front. And you have your fibula kind of on the outside. It's actually over here. -ish. Your fibula is the smaller one kind of on the outside to the back on the bone here. Your kneecap, you can actually feel it moving around. Your kneecap is called your patella. Your patella is a small bone that is on top of your two bones. It stops your leg from overextending. Your patella actually floats on top of your knee, of your bones. So the patella is attached only by um, tendons. It actually isn't embedded totally in the bone. So it actually, so it isn't connected to other bones. It is connected to bones via muscles. Um, or not muscle, by, via um, tendons and fibers. So that is why you can move your... That's why you can move your, your like, um, bone there around. Because your, like, knee bone isn't actually connected to anything. actually higher. Our knees are buoyant, guys. <laughs> Floats. It's magic. Pretty much. <laughs> the patella is sailing the seven knees. That's funny. I like that one. If you've ever seen people draw the pelvis before, feel the top of your hips. That is where this arch is coming from. That is called your iliac crest. Your iliac crest. Isn't that fun?
right? And again, if you didn't know, our tail will extend from the tailbone at the back of the pelvis. We do have a tailbone if you have ever fallen flat on your butt. It hurts pretty bad right above where, like, your butt actually starts. That is your tailbone. The back of our pelvis is a sort of connected, I can't remember the name of it, but it is a sort of connected version of your spine down here. And then you have a couple of extra pieces Oh, this is the, this is the, is it the sacrum? It's either the sacrum or the coccyx. The coccyx, yeah, it's, it's one or the other. It's either the sacrum or the coccyx. I mix these two up all the time. Um, but this thingy right here is your sort of connected bit. And then this is your tailbone. So ours is really, really short. It's either three to five pieces, something like that. It's either three to five or one to three. It's, it's been a while. Um, but when you have those, on people, they're very, very short. On stuff that actually have tails, these bones will continue. They're much, much longer. Because all a tail is, is an extension of the spine. So, when we are drawing tails in, we want to make sure that it is coming from the correct place. So it'll be right above the butt. Sacrum is the bigger one. Thank you. So yeah, this one is the sacrum, and then this one is the coccyx. I don't have an algebra bone. Okay, there's like nine minutes left. I don't think I can squeeze in one more. So anybody have any other questions with the three that I've talked about? Or if you just have general questions about anything else. That's kind of fantasy character-esque. Her fantasy race-esque. Hi! I don't know if it's true, though, we have tails, quote-unquote like a thing with the quote-unquote appendix is useless and scientists find out it is not. I don't really know what that means, but we do have a tailbone. <laughs> the hooves seen from below, that depends on the species. So for a reindeer, I know that reindeer hooves look kind of like this. But it really depends on the type of hoof that you are drawing. A horse hoof looks like this, right? So it's like, it really depends on the species that you're going for. Um, so that one, it's like, you just have to look at the animal print and you'll figure it out. Do magic skeletons count as fantasy? I do not know. <laughs> Where do I get reference? It's a lot of sort of just referring to real life. Um, and kind of working backwards. So I'm like, okay, I'm like, what do I want to inspire? That's a big thing about being a designer. If any of you are aspiring character artists, you should never limit yourself within your character design. Um, really get inspired by absolutely everything that is around you. It's, it makes your designs a lot more interesting. Especially if you want to do, like, weirder critters. Um, <clears throat> so again, like, my dragonborn are inspired by, like, everything, right? Like, like, my pet tree is inspired a lot by goats. Uh, corn is inspired by, um, magpies and crows and stuff like that. So it's really important that you sort of just get inspiration from everywhere don't just stick to illustrators don't just stick to whatever species you're going for right really get inspired from all angles of the world what would be the anatomy for a person with dragon wings exactly the same so if you have like this would be the where the joints coming from the membrane would continue down the body i would never make that membrane any smaller than starting at the top of the hips Right, so if you if you kind of have like that membrane going down the back, I would never make it any smaller than like where your pelvis starts. So like if you have that first joint up at the top of the shoulder blade, then it goes all the way down the back like that. So that that works properly. But it is the same anatomy. It's actually exactly the same anatomy. It's a little reindeer man. I love him. Hi Grace. This is um Cliff. Cliff is my um my my uh satyr paladin <laughs> or my fawn slash satyr paladin he's a he's a reindeer instead of whatever D, &D tells me to do <laughs> figure out our head bat things like the skin that connects under the arms of the torso how much of the torso would they need to connect to all the way down to the feet if you've never seen how a bat works um bats <laughs> bats kind of have their whole body like this and then the little feetsies come out like this, and they have, like, a tail here. Or it's the other way around. I think it's, like, the... 
Yeah, they have the tail here, and then the feetsies are like this. Their entire body is connected to the bottom of that tail. Or to their feet. It's one or the other. I know it's like all the way down their body, though. It's not like just one or the other. So it's like you... It, let's say that we have it connected to the actual feet. So then you have their wings come out. Because if you've never seen how bat or dragon wings work, these are the fingers. And then they connect down to the feet like this. So your wings are gonna be huge. Like huge, huge. Have I ever written a book? No. I've written, like, things for myself. I mean, I wrote Say Hello Grayson back in the day, but I never actually finished it. <laughs> How do double joints work? Good question. Um, oh, no. No, I do know this. My teacher told me this. You have more elasticity in your in your, uh, in your your tendons. And, uh, yeah, you have more elasticity in your tendons. Um, so if you can bend your fingers back more than you should, or if you have double joints in your fingers, it just means, or in your arms or whatever, then you have more elasticity in your muscle and tendons. For bird wings, would the shoulder blade turn into a joint? No. So the shoulder blade, um, so it isn't really a joint joint. When you have a, the starting point for, like, limbs or something, um... One of the type of, like, connecting points is called a fossa. So that's what the... It's the ball and socket joint is what the arm is connected to. Um, so it's not that it becomes a joint. There will be an extra joint added on. How do you draw big hands? The same? Yep. Characters of butterfly are moth wings. Same deal. Exact same deal. Um, the entry point, I guess, will just be smaller. If you have butterfly wings, butterfly wings go down the entire body. So, like, you'll probably want to do that. Um, moth wings, same thing, right? Look at how they attach on the body of the actual... For those of you who are wondering about different types of wings, look at how they attach on the body of the actual animal and compare and contrast. How much of that wing is connected to the body of the animal? So then you'll have to estimate based on how much is connected onto the person, right? So if, again, for birds, if it's connected to, like, two-thirds of the body, you'll have it connected to two-thirds of the person's torso. Characters based on animals that are endangered or less known about? You, you Google them. I don't know. <laughs> Who knew drawing was so detailed and complex? Yeah, it's fun. <laughs> if you wanted to add more pairs of wings like two, where would they connect? That's difficult. So I have had a character in the past with six wings. Um, so what a lot of people do, especially for, like, extra limbs, is they will have s multiple entry points on the rib cage, because that is the more realistic place they would go. Um, so, like, if you would have one point here, one point here, like, maximum four is generally what people say. Um, but here's the thing, when you have more than one set of wings, that's when things start to get really, really unrealistic. Um, so really, like... If I was to actually tell you, it doesn't work anatomically. Um, but that's when the fantasy comes in, and who cares? So generally what I did was I had the first pair of wings connecting at the top of the shoulder blades, the second pair at the bottom of the shoulder blades, kind of here, and the third pair starting at the base of the crook of the neck, or the base of the, the torso, kind of coming down. There's no attachment point here. That would not work at all, but it was just to help space it out. My philosophy is the more wings you have, the thinner and smaller you can make them, because there's more things making this person fly so you could even just do this magic and have them all coming from the rib cage like that if you wanted or again if there's only four you could have one starting at the top one starting at the bottom of the shoulder blades which would be kind of like here-ish and just have the connection point there and have the feathers go downwards so you could do that too if you wanted but that's 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 tricky because there is no quote-unquote correct way to do that really how big would you make bee wings? Because they don't fold up, so making them really big probably would look weird. How would you personally make them? Bee wings are really connected directly at the top of the character. So if you had them outwards, they would spread out like this. But if they were flat against the back, then I would do the same thing that bees and wasps do, which is just fold them back downwards. They have a weird sort of attachment point here, where like all that they really do to quote-unquote spread and um fold their wings back is just like rotate them on the back like that so that is pretty much how i would do it 
is just that one attachment point and rotate them. Did you learn this from the National Geographic at 3 a.m. of the Seraphim? No. <laughs> no, I didn't learn this at 3 a.m. National Geographic. At Geographic. I, I taught myself this. <laughs> This drawing is tied with our understanding of the real world and its properties. Pose is anatomy, no wonder re references are crucial. Yes, 100%. Alright, that is 7 o'clock, though, everybody. Thank you all so, so much for joining. Um, I hope that this was helpful in any sort of way. I like talking about anatomy, so hopefully you liked listening to me ramble about, like, a bunch of different kinds of anatomy. Um, if you don't know too much about the studio, don't know too much about us... Um, we're not just a YouTube channel. We're also an art studio. Hey, join in. Come talk. Come, come say hi. Uh, during classes that we teach, wingcanvas.com, there are some camps that will be running throughout the rest of the summer. I will not be teaching them, but there will be other camps taught by other individuals. Um, there's, I believe there's figure drawing still. I think there's an animation camp going on. Um, so if you would like to check out those, um, then you may do so. This file that you see in front of you will be available as a JPEG on our Discord. Join the Discord, talk to other fellow art nerds, um, make, see the other tutorials, um, submit your work for the intro portion, all that fun jazz. But if you would like our working files, you're going to have to join our Patreon because you become a YouTube member, that sort of thing. Once per month, you will get working files and other behind-the-scenes footage and things like that. Also, special access to certain channels in the Discord where I am more active and the other streamers are more active. And you can get critique on your work as requested. Next week... Um, what is going on this Sunday? Wait, do we have a stream this Sunday? I believe we do. Hang on, I got this. Yes, so this Sunday we have How to Draw Storyboards. I believe that is with that is with Vanessa. So Vanessa will be teaching you guys how to draw storyboards on Sunday. And then next week you have Josh, who's going to be teaching you the 12 principles of animation. Um, I will actually not be back until September. So the other streamers will be taking over for me as well. Um, so, uh, yes, um... Yeah, <laughs> there we go. Um, so yeah, thank you all so, so much for joining um, me for today. Um, and I will see you uh, again in September. Au revoir. Bye-bye.